Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the ovary. Ovary is the female gonad. It produces the ovum and it also produces hormones like estrogen, progesterone. So in that sense, it is a mixed gland, both exocrine and endocrine. So what are the identifying points for the ovary? If we go to the ovary, then we'll find out that. So ovary has outer cortex. This part is the cortex, cortical part that containing the developing follicles. We have follicle, the primordial follicle. We have the primary follicle, secondary follicle. Then we have the mature graphian follicle. Uh, then after ovulation, we'll get the corpus luteum. So to the identifying point, the cortex here. This is the medulla. This is the cortex. These are the developing follicle. And the ovary is surrounded by the tunica albuginea. That is a dense, irregular connective tissue. There is the tunica albuginea. The tunica albuginea is covered by the simple cuboidal epithelium. There is also called germinal epithelium. But it is a misnomer term. It is not relation. It is not in relationship to that of germination because our follicle is inside the tunica albuginea. So that is a modified epithelium, modified mesothelium, that is cuboidal epithelium on the surface of the ovary. So again, try the cuboidal epithelium or germinal epithelium, tunica albuginea, cortex containing the follicles in different stages of development, the corpus luteum, the product after ovulation okay we have the corpus atric at, atricum that may happen because of some of the follicle cannot go to become the mature follicle around 20 primordial follicle start to mature only one becomes the mature follicle or graphene follicle that that will discharge the ovum we call it ovulation so we have the Follicular cell initially it is simple squamous epithelium. This is the primordial follicle. Then we have one layer of cuboidal epithelium over the oocyte, that is the primary follicle. Then we have multilaminar primary follicle. In the they are these cells are suspended in meiosis in, in prophase stage, meiosis one in prophase then the cell division will, will continue to progress further. And here is the secondary follicle. We'll get the, the antrum there, cavity in between the follicular cell. Follicular cells are also called granulosa cell. Then here, the second meiotic division will start. Here, this is the mature follicle. When there is ovulation, it is in the second meiotic division in the metaphase stage. Okay, we got that. So these are the identifying point. These are the follicle, and we'll go the second slide here. Okay, here we are looking at this very simple here: the cortex and the medulla. Medulla is vascular. Cortex is containing the the follicular cells, corpus luteum. There will be ovulation, and at this stage the oocyte is in second mutic division in metaphase stage okay and we have the ovary ovary is surrounded by the tunica albuginea that is covered by the keyboard epithelium that is a epithelium derived from the visal peritoneum and this is keyboard simple keyboard epithelium the ovary is reaching blood supply by means of nasobarium. It is suspended. It is it is suspended by the broad ligament and by the suspensory ligament of the ovary and the ovarian ligament. The point at which blood vessel enter, we call it hilum of the ovary. That hilum continues in the in the medulla of the ovary.
Okay. So we are looking at the cortex of the ovary and the primordial uh, follicle here. These are the primordial follicle. The oocyte is surrounded by simple squamous epithelium. These are the primordial follicle. This is the cortex of the ovary and this is the tunica albuginea that is dense irregular connective tissue. The tunica albuginea in the ovary is thinner than that of the testis and it is lined by simple keyboard epithelium. These are the surface epithelium. These are also called misnomerly as germinal epithelium. Okay, we got that. Now we we'll go to the next slide. Here is the secondary oocyte will develop. There will be formation of antrum, the cavity among the, the granulosa cell and there will be cavity, there are initially multiple cavity, then all cavity will unite together in a mature follicle to become a bare, to become a big, big cavity. This is called antrum, that is the cavity that is containing fluid that is rich in protein, uh, amino, it is rich in protein and the, the proteoglycans and also it contains progesterone and estradiol and also activin. Okay, so this, are, this fluid is rich in protein. This is a, an, a derivative of the plasma. Okay, so this is rich in, in protein. So these are the stages of development of the ovary. If we look at that, here is the, here is the oocyte primordial follicle. The oocyte is covered by simple squamous epithelium. Then we have primary follicle. We have the simple keyboard epithelium. We have multiple keyboard epithelium. And we will have, this is the secondary or antral follicle. We have multiple cavity. Follicle layer will be also increased, but there is cavity formation. And this is the antrum that is rich in protein and also the aminoglycans and proteoglycans and the progesterone and the activin. Okay, then we get the, the mature follicle. This is the antrum, one big cavity, and these cells are called corner radiator cell. And the some follicular cell connect the connect the the ovum to the to the to the to the thicker internal cell. Okay, these follicular cells are called the they are called the cumulus oophorus. So cumulus oophorus cell will be here, and the cell surrounding the oocyte, which will be discharged along with the oocyte at ovulation, are called corona radiator. So we'll get the cumulus oophorus here. And the cell surrounding it that will be discharged along with the oocyte at ovulation is called corona radiator. Okay, so if we go here, here if we go, this is a picture of the ovary. Okay, this is an arrow marking showing the stages of development of the follicles. We have the primordial follicle, early primary follicle, late primary follicle with multi layers of epithelial cell around the oocyte. Then we have the secondary follicle, there will be cavity formation. Some follicle may not be, be graphene follicle. They will develop into ectatic follicle by involution and by phagocytic action of the macrophages. So there will be big cavity formation. And here is the mature graphene follicle. And this here, the follicular cell around the oocyte is called the corner radiator, follicular cell connecting the oocyte to the, to the, to the ovarian follicle here, we have the theca internal cell, we have the theca external cell, here these cells, follicular cells are called cumulus oophorus. Then there will be discharge of the ovum along with the corona radiator cell. The cell remaining here will be converted into corpus luteum cell by the action of the, of the luteinizing hormone. Initially there may be some bleeding here, we call it corpus hemorrhagicum, okay, bleeding due to, to the discharge of the oocyte, there will be some type of folding of the remaining follicular cell, the cumulus oophorus cell, 
and a thicker internal cell. So that will that will lead to some bleeding that is called corpus hemorrhagicum. Okay, then there will be conversion of this follicular cell into the corpus luteal cell by the action of the corpus by the action of the luteinizing hormone. This follicle is surrounded by the thicker external cell, thicker internal cell. Thicker internal cell produces the 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 thicker internal cell will produce the estrogen and the corpus luteal cell will produce the progesterone so if there is no fertilization then this corpus luteum will be atretic and it will develop into corpus albicans it will be degenerated this cell will be degenerated okay we got that now we we'll go to here clinical correlation this is very important to us one of the common condition is called polycystic ovarian disease also called stain Leventhal syndrome what happened there will be no ovulation there will be hirsutism and and there will be infertility usually in obese uh, young women may have this problem what is the exact cause you don't know but maybe due to the thick tunic albuginia so that the the follicle cannot be continue to form the graphene follicle and if it is it is it goes to form the graphene poly follicle it may not be teachers so no ovulation will take place and that is called polycystic ovarian disease we have another clinical problem that may arise that is the ovarian cancer there is a devastating condition there is different pathology than that of that this is separate entity and it is one of the leading cause of death in female due to ovarian cancer okay so what are the highlights of today's lecture class identification we have cortex medulla we have tunic albuginia and we have the in the cortex we have the follicle primordial follicle the primary follicle secondary follicle or antral follicle we have the mature graphene follicle we have ovulation at ovulation what happened at ovulation the ovum comes out in second meiotic division in metaphase if it is fertilized by a sperm then the second meiotic division will be completed otherwise it will not be completed in the primordial follicle cells are in the meiosis in prophase okay cortex containing the 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 follicle medulla is vascular tunic albuginia is thin but dense irregular connective tissue ovarian follicle we discussed that entram of the follicle contain fluid that is rich in protein proteoglycans glycosaminoglycans and the activin and the progesterone and estradiol ovulation of fertilization we discussed that no fertilization no completion of second mutic division once there is fertilization then the second mutic division of the ovum will be completed okay if there is no fertilization corpus luteum will degenerate and there will be formation of corpus albicum by involution and phagocytic action of the of the macrophages and there is some apoptosis of the cell okay corpus luteum it is the 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 follicle large cell conversion after the ovulation what is in the graphene follicle the follicular cell will be converted into corpus luteum and also part of the thicker internal cell thicker internal cell releases the estrogen the corpus luteal cell the follicular cell will be become the they have become they will be yellowish color and they will be activated by the luteinizing hormone they produce the progesterone Okay, corpus albicans is the remnant of corpus luteum, atretic follicle, some follicle, around 20 follicle, they start to become mature follicle, only one become graphene follicle, other will not progress to that level, that will be atretic follicle by the action of the phago macrophage, by phagocytosis and also by involution and apoptosis. Hormones from the ovary, estrogen, progesterone also relaxing 
from the from the luteal cell luteal cells are the present in the corpus luteum mostly from the from the follicular cell or the granulosa cell after ovulation okay so these are my references and that's all about the histology of the ovary if you like my video please support my channel please subscribe me share the information with your friends if you have any question please feel free to ask me have a nice day bye now